here is a quiz that I wrote for my lab class. Uh, and I'm going to go over the solution. Now, it did turn out to be slightly more complicated than I intended, but I think it's still a legitimate problem. So let's let's look at it. Uh, see, lab for friction quiz name. I should put my name here. Rhett Elaine. It's the end, it's, you can read it. That's an A. Okay, so a block sits on an inclined plane. What magnitude force do you need to push to prevent the block, the block from sliding down the incline? What force do you need to push it to make it start to, this should say move, up the incline? Accelerate's okay too. Okay, and you can, if you interpret that in a wrong way, I'm cool with that because it was my fault with the ambiguous question. So I give the mass of the block, I give the coefficient of static friction, the angle, and here you're pushing this horizontally. So let's start off with uh, the how much do I have to push horizontally to prevent this from sliding down. Uh, so let's just let's just I want to redraw the picture because I don't like where I put that force. So here's my block, and so what forces are acting on the block? Well, I have the downward gravitational force, m g. And then I have the force from the surface pushing up, the normal force, and that's this way, N. I'll just call that N. Next, I have that force that I'm pushing, FP. I don't know what that is. FP. Finally, if I'm trying to prevent it from going sliding down the incline, then friction would be pushing up the incline. So friction would be this way. F, I'll just call it F friction. And this is going to be the maximum frictional force because I want to push the minimum amount to keep it from sliding. Okay. So now the next thing is what uh, I have these four forces and I know the following uh, F net X equals zero F net Y equals zero. So I want to just keep it from changing its motion. So it's, it's right at that tipping point. So which, the, the question is which way is the x-axis and which way is the y-axis. I mean, I could put the x-axis this way, uh, or I could put it this way. I'm going to put it this way. Let's do it in, in green. So there's my x-axis, and then I have to have the y-axis perpendicular. Now, I mean, the nice thing about that is that if, if this was accelerating, then the acceleration of the block would be in either the x or the y direction. That's useful, right? Uh, because one of these would be a non-zero term, and the other one would be. If it's accelerating in both directions, it's a little more complicated. Not impossible. So let's just write down the forces that we have. The first thing, if this is the angle theta, then this is the angle theta. And also this, let's see, is this angle theta? These are right angles. Yeah, so that, that's also theta. All right? Because imagine if this... Uh, plane went all the way down to theta equals zero, then that angle would be zero, it'd be in the horizontal direction. Okay, so I can write down the net forces in the x direction. Let's write that as an equation. F net x equals, what forces do I have? Well, I have uh, part of this gravitational force. The gravitational force has an x and a y component. So here is the x component. And since I know the magnitude of this force is mg, uh, and I use the sine of theta would give me opposite over adjacent. So this would be mg, that's equals to mg sine theta. That's the x component of that. What else is acting in the x direction? Well, I have that friction force in the negative x direction, so minus ff. I'm just doing the magnitude now. And then I have part of this pushing force. So if this is the angle theta, then this is also broken into a y component and an x component. And you can see here the x component is the cosine of that angle. So it's going to be f, it's going to be minus fp cosine theta. And that has to equal zero. Okay, now what about the y forces? F net y. What forces do I have? I have the normal force pushing in the y direction, in, and then I have the y component of gravity that's going to be minus mg cosine theta and then I have this is see this force is not only pushing um, to the left it's also pushing the block into the 
into the surface. So the, that's going to increase the normal force. So FP, the Y component of FP is going to be this. I'm going to use the sine of that angle because I want the opposite side right there. So this will be minus FP sine theta equals zero. So there I have two equations. Um, I know M, I know G, I know theta. I don't know the friction force. I don't know FP. So I actually have, and I don't know the normal force. So I actually have three variables and two equations. But I have another equation. If it's at the maximum friction force, I can say the friction force is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So if I put that in here, um, then I can get rid of the friction force. Okay, so let's do that. Let's uh, switch to another piece of paper. So I'm going to uh, substitute that in. So this is my x equation, mg sine theta minus the friction force, which is going to be minus mu s n minus f p, p cosine theta equals zero. And remember, I want to solve for f p. And then the other equation becomes n. I'm going to solve the the second equation, the y equation for n. So I get n equals mg cosine theta plus fp sine theta. Now I can substitute that in, and I get the, this equation becomes mg sine theta minus mu s times all of this. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply it out. So I have mu s times this mg cosine theta, and there's still a minus sign, right? So I get minus mu s fp sine theta, and then I have that term, minus fp cosine theta equals zero. So let's add these two terms to the other side and factor out the fp, because that's the only fp terms. So I have mg sine theta minus mu s mg cosine theta equals fp times mu s sine theta plus cosine theta. All right, so when I add these to both sides, they're going to be positive. And then I'm going to factor out the FP, and I get that term right there. Now I solve for FP and uh, by dividing both sides by this, and I get FP equals uh, this one I can factor out the MG. So I get MG times sine of theta minus mu s cosine theta all of that divided by mu s sine theta plus cosine theta. What happened to the minus? Oh, that moved. That's right. Okay, I think that's right. Okay, so now I know all these terms, right? I know m, I know g, I know theta. I can just plug this into my equation and get that force. So let's do that. I'm, I'm going to use I'm gonna use Python. You know, I'm a huge Python fan. It really makes a great calculator. Uh, so let's just jump right to it. Um, I actually, computer view, uh, I actually have some data in here already from a previous calculation. I just didn't save it. So let me go ahead and type in mass equals uh, 0 0.22. 222. Uh, mu s, this is called mu, equals 0 0.14. Uh, g equals 9.8. Now, I'm not using the gravitational field vector g, I'm just using the magnitude. I've already taken that into account. So I'm just writing uh, g is 9.8. Uh, theta, spell it correctly, theta is 33. But Python likes uh, angles in radians, so I'm going to convert this to radians by multiplying by pi, divide by 180. And there, I got that. Okay, so let's see, g, sine theta, I have everything. So now I can just go ahead and solve for fp. fp, I'm just typing my equation here. m times g times sine theta minus mu times cosine theta. All of that divided by mu times sine theta minus cosine theta. Is that right? No, plus. And then I got the parentheses matched up over here. Yep. Okay, so now I can just say print FP equals FP. And let's put Newtons because technically it is. And run it. And I get a force. I'm writing it down over here. 1.015 1 
nine newtons. Okay, let's switch back to the paper. So now the second part of the question said, well, what, what if I want to make the block slide up the plane? Okay, so if I want to push this block up the plane and to get it moving, I had to push harder, right? Uh, and so what's going to happen is this static friction force wants to oppose the relative change in motion. So that means this, this whole force is going to be pushing this way now. Well, I mean, that's pretty easy to, to compensate for, right? Uh, so in this case, what would change? I have uh, this, this would change. So I'm going to circle that. I'm going to circle that as plus. Okay. Uh, and this, would this change? FP, this would change too. Uh, that's the same. Then when I substitute that in, um, this is that plus, and this is, it was in there twice. No, that one doesn't change. That's the, that's a P that's on an F, just that one. And so really what I could do is just, uh, you can see that I'm effectively changing the sign of the of the uh, coefficient of friction mu. Uh, so that's what's actually what's going to happen down here. This is going to be uh, a plus. That's all. So if I just go over to my same calculation back to Python, and I'll turn on the camera so you can see me, uh, then I can just recalculate this by putting a minus sign in front of that and recalculating. And I get uh, 1.8892. So it is harder to push it up than it is to prevent it from sliding. Because uh, in one case you're working with friction, in the other case you're working against friction. But there you go. So that's the answer to that problem. It's a little bit more complicated than I wanted to. But um, if you really understand forces, it's not so bad.